Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. If I get interrupted this time, I'm just gonna scream and throw my laptop at the wall and say fuck it. Uh, I this like my fourth attempt, I wanna say. The first time my phone died, the second time the computer died, the third time my husband came up and decided he wanted to talk and stomp our brands up. So this is a quick video about well, I don't know how quick it'll be. Um about what supplements I take, how I eat on a vegan diet. Because when I was originally transitioning, well, not originally trans, when I was transitioning back to being vegan, and mind you, it's still it's a work in progress. Um, but one of the things that I was most concerned about is getting the proper nutrition uh, while being a breastfeeding mother. And um, because you know my daughter needs the nutrition through the breast milk, I need the nutrition. But the only resources that I could find, or most of the only resources I could find, I guess, um, that even address breastfeeding, talked about breastfeeding as an infant. So, like, you know, very, very small. And that's great, and that's wonderful, but the needs of a one-year-old are drastically different from the needs of a, like, two-week-old. So, um, and they get different nutritional values from the breast milk because the breast milk changes, you know, uh, to suit their needs. And so their nutritional needs from the breast milk is going to be different at a year where, you know, she's getting some of her nutrition from food, some of her nutrition from meat, etc. Um, than a two week old who's getting all their nutrition from the breast milk. So, so I found that kind of, um, confusing and I didn't know what supplements to take, what, um, how to even eat, how to make sure that I'm getting the proper, you know, uh, servings of this, that, the other, to make sure that I'm getting everything that I need, everything that my daughter needs. So I thought I'd make a quick video, um, and just kind of lists what resources that I've consulted that have helped me, um, what supplements I take, what my daughter takes, stuff like that. So, um, first I guess we'll start off with what supplements I take. I, first of all, take a prenatal vitamin. I just get mine from GNC. Ah, there it is. Um, and I have to make sure that has DHA and iron in it. Uh, I was taking a regular prenatal vitamin um, that was the same brand, uh, and it said prenatal, but I, it didn't say, it said actually without iron, and that was a major problem. I was getting very lightheaded, very weak, very, you know, I was having major issues to the point where I'm like, am I? pregnant again like what the hell is going on I was sick all the time um, I was lightheaded I was having dizzy spells a lot I just felt like crap um, so finally I'm like you know what I think it's probably because I'm not getting enough iron not enough B12 maybe I don't know so I went back and got um, the special formula with DHA and iron and I strongly recommend that especially if you're vegan or vegetarian um, so I take the prenatal, that's every day. And then I take a B12 supplement. There. Um, and that is 500 micrograms. Um, and according to something that I just read recently, I should be getting, I think, 1,000 micrograms of B12 a week. So what I do, um, generally, is I take this one every like three days or so. So like Thursday and Sunday are my B12 days. Um, and then I also take a vitamin D. Um, now mind you, this is D3. And if you're uh, vegan, you should probably know that D3 is actually derived from an egg-based source, I believe. D2 is not. D2 is derived from a soy source, but D3 is derived from an egg-based source. So that sucks. But... <laughs> This was the only thing that they had. This was the only vitamin D supplement that they had. And, um, like, Wal I couldn't find it at Walmart. I couldn't find it at, you know, D3 was the only thing that was available. So I am kind of breaking the vegan ground on that. And I do feel a little bit badly about it. But And, again, that's twice a week. So Tuesday and Friday are basically my vitamin D days. Um, and then that's it. Those are the only three supplements that I take. And I've just started taking all three of those in conjunction maybe a week or two ago. And I must say, I feel so much better. I'm like up all the time. I'm feeling normal. It's great. And then what my daughter takes, she just takes a vitamin D and an iron supplement. Because the last time we went to the pediatrician, they tested her blood. She was low on iron. And they were a little bit concerned by that. So they said just 
get an iron supplement and, you know, make sure that she's good there. So she takes um, one milla, milligram, milla, not milliliter, I don't think. Milliliter, oh, okay. One of these um, every day. And the vitamin D, she will just take it straight from this. She actually likes it. Uh, it's kind of fruity flavored. I'm sure it's because it's excessive amounts of sugar and stuff in there that she doesn't need. But um, And then, but this tastes absolutely disgusting. So we have to hide it in apple juice. That's the only thing she will take it in. We've tried hiding it in um, milk. We've tried hiding it in breast milk. We've tried hiding it in smoothies. She will only drink it in apple juice. Apparently some sort of tang in the apple is enough to disguise enough that she will drink it. Um, but we have to be careful because whatever you mix this in, it will stain. So um, we give her the apple juice on hard floor services when, you know, when she's not going to drip it all over herself. Okay, so those are our supplements. Um, some resources that I have found that really help. One of them um, I don't actually have on me. It's called Main Street Vegan by Victoria Moran or Moran. Um, I'm bad at pronunciations. I'm so bad. Uh, Bialik. Uh, name Bialik. I actually looked that up. Okay. Um, but Main Street Vegan. Sorry. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Main Street Vegan, um, very good resource, especially for uh, transitioning to a vegan diet. It's very um, down to earth, very common sense, really good book. Um, another book that I am actually working on right now is A Compassionate Diet by Aaron Steffens with Elliot J. Rosen. And this is a really good just kind of it is really small, really thin. Not so much about the nutritional, what you need to eat, but sort of a um, an ethical why you need to eat. I I just I'm reading it as encouragement sort of thing. To yeah, you're on the right track sort of thing. Um, another book, and this is very much about nutrition, making sure you're getting all that is vegan for her. By Virginia Messina, MPHRD with GL Fields. Um, the Woman's Guide to Being Healthy and Fit on a Plant-Based Diet. And why I really love this one in particular is it goes through every stage of a woman's life. So we're talking, you know, from your first period to menopause, breastfeeding, pregnancy, everything in between. And it will even give sample, like, meal or diet plans for, well, this one was for a pregnant woman. Um... But, you know, and be like, these are all the things that you need. These are all the servings that you're going to need of these different things to make sure that you get all these different nutritional components. Um, if you're a little bit confused about how to, how you're going to get all that in, here's a sample meal plan. You know, you can, you could substitute peanut butter for a cup of chickpeas or, you know, and get basically the same thing. So I really found that very helpful. And she has a whole section here on breastfeeding moms. Um... And so that's where I get kind of, you know, I got to make sure I'm getting six servings of grains, five servings of legumes, two servings of nuts, five servings of vegetables, two servings of fruits, and two servings of fats. Focusing, of course, on leafy veggies and vitamin A rich veggies and um, getting enough calories in, which I kind of have a problem with. I That is difficult for me, especially on a plant-based diet, I found, because, you know, if you're, like, actually eating well and mostly plants and stuff, not a whole lot of calories in kale. So, another great resource I found is Vegan Eating for Kids. And, shout out to the Joliet Public Library, they have some awesome vegan resources. These all came from the Joliet Library, except for the first one, Main Street Vegan, which is why I don't have it to show to you right now. But this one is really excellent. It, it talks about um, not only what all kids need, um, and I mean, it goes through every stage of Nutritional needs of vegan kids, 0 to 12 months, 12, to, 12 months to 3 years, 4 years to 8 years, tweens, teenagers, um, when things aren't working out, signs of nutritional deficiencies, supplements, how to shop, and then a bunch of like um, recipes and stuff, meal plans, um, kid-friendly 
dinner plans and stuff like that. This was a really good one, and I got some excellent ideas from this one. And then the last one that I, the last book that I have is Nayim Bialik's. Um, sorry, I love that name. I think that's an awesome name, and I think she's an awesome person. Her my Nayim's Vegan Table. Um, and if you don't know much about Nayim Bialik, I'm reading her um, parenting book right now. She is an amazing person, let me just say. So you probably know her as Amy Farrah Fowler from The Big Bang Theory, but or Blossom from when she was like a teenager, preteen. But she is a pretty amazing person. She started with acting when she was like a, a little kid, and then she's like, nah, I'm done with that. I'm going to go get my PhD in neuroscience. And so she did. And then she had kids, and then she said, well, we kind of need to pay the bills. I guess I'll go back to acting. And she did, and now it's like, so, but like her main focus of study, her main passion in life, besides her kids and her family, is neuroscience, which she has a PhD in, which I think is amazing. When she actually applied um, to the Big Bang Theory, or to go back to acting or whatever, she actually put her PhD under miscellaneous, along with speak Spanish and Hebrew. Oh, by the way, I also have a PhD in neuroscience. Could, you know, I guess that doesn't really... But anyway, this is, sorry, off topic a little bit for me in love. Um, but this is an amazing cookbook. Um, she is vegan. Her family is vegan. And some of these just look, oh my gosh, orgasmic. I mean, look at that deliciousness. Look, oh, what? What? Vegan challah? Cookies. Oh, it looks amazing. So I've got some recipes earmarked to try, um, and I can't wait to dig in there. So those are some of the books that have helped me, some of the book resources that have helped me um, in transitioning back to eating vegan. Um, some Actually, YouTube is a wonderful resource, believe it or not. <sighs> Sorry, my alarm is going off. Okay. Um... YouTube is a great resource. There's a lot of really good channels. Um, there's a lot of bad, I don't want to call them bad channels. Um, I don't know, a little, uh, not sketchy, but kind of like, mm, take it with a grain of salt type channels. Um, like, really the banana girl. But she was a, it's a good resource. Um, through like with veganism and stuff. They, the thing about this whole vegan movement, vegan lifestyle, I think, is that it's very easy to become uh, militant and belligerent and in your beliefs and to come off as completely batshit crazy um, when that's really not, maybe that's not how you are, that's certainly not how you're trying to be perceived, but because of the passion for non-cruelty and stuff, it's really easy to come off that way to non-vegans. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're looking up, like, really the banana girl or happy, healthy vegan or raw Christina, um, which have all helped me tremendously. Some other channels are Unnatural Vegan. She is awesome. I don't know if she's a nutritionist or what, but she knows her shit. Um, very interesting to watch. I always get a lot of information from her and very thought provoking great channel. Hop on over there and check her out if you want. I'm going to try to remember to link all these in the down bar below. I'm sorry if I forget. Um, another one um, who actually is not on YouTube, um, but she has a blog. Last time I checked was at bonsaiaphrodite.com, I think. Um, really excellent. Uh, she's a vegan mama, uh, vegan pregnancy, raises her kid vegan. Um, she just opened up a vegan wine bar, I learned. Like, she is an amazing, amazing businesswoman, entrepreneur, writer. Um, Rebel, oh god, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting the last name. I'm blanking on the last name. It's, an, it's a really cool name, too, and it's like, Oh, I forget. But her son's name is Waits. Like, Tom Waits? Yeah. Yeah. That's how badass this chick is. She named her little son after Tom Waits. Just saying. Okay. And then, um, films, documentaries, stuff like that. Uh, Vegucated was the first one that really, like, flowed my boat. Forks over knives. 
Earthlings, I haven't actually gotten around to watching, mostly because it's probably going to hit me worse than a horror movie. Um, so I'm kind of scared to watch that one, but I know I need to. I know it. I know it. And I will eventually. And then, um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it, <laughs> actually. Um, so what do you guys do? What is your diet plans? How do you do this? If you're vegan or vegetarian or you have a specific, you know, maybe you're gluten-free, you have a specific uh, diet lifestyle type plan. Um, how do you get around that? How do you, um, do you find it difficult to find the foods that you need in stores? Do you just go to Walmart? Do you have to go to special health food stores? Um, and, you know, how, how does that work out for you? Do you have to take supplements to supplement your diet, um, or is that not something that you're really thinking about right now? So yeah, uh, comment below or make a response video, that'd be great, and tell me what you're doing. And until next time, I will talk to you later. <laughs>